individuals. And I tell you, I'm riding my best individual. Hope is incredible. We already know what he is. But the others, they're probably not the best individuals, but they're good team members. At the moment, they're trotting around this arena. One's trotting to a canter, and I'm going to try and put the three together because a team does everything together. Sequel, I'm really not impressed with your biting at your little sister, and so I give him a tap on the hind end. Now, is that hard? It's no harder than what he was doing to her. He was dominating her with his physicality, so I do it as well. I'll put a change of direction on here, at least try to. Look at my number one. Look at Pride. I can't get the inside line, but I'm going to run up in the middle. So, it's very hard to do a lot of work in here, but I'm saying to them all the time, while I move, you're to move. When I stand, you get to rest. Look at them hunted. People come up to me all the time and say, Guy, it is wonderful to see that you don't discipline your horses very much. And I don't say much about it. Well, I actually do. I tell them what I'm about to say. Then I have some other people come up and I, they say, Guy, and they're normally someone who follows another trainer, they say, we're disgusted that you do not reward your horses enough. And I say, well, you're both wrong. I discipline all the time. Every time my horse is doing something that I do not want, he's giving me a behaviour I'm not happy with, I discipline them in the way you just saw me do there. Discipline isn't a smack on the mouth, it's not a punch in the, in the belly or a kick, it's not a ah or a bad. Discipline is get out and work. These horses can use the, their bodies, in a, they are a ball of energy, and they can use that energy for walk, trot and canter, side pass, piaf, passage and spin, or they can use that energy for kick, bite, strike. So I make sure that they only use it for something good. Then they say that I don't reward them very much. These horses are being rewarded now. This is more important to them than any piece of sugar. It's more important to them than any carrot because they get to have a rest. A horse doesn't need to eat if he doesn't have to work too hard. So these horses say we can come in and stand here. Something I like that Rex Peterson says, and I've been saying it for many years and I've never met the man before this time, but he says that we have a horse has 24 hours in a day. We desire normally to have one hour of that, so let's expect perfection. It's something I've always said. If we go out there and say, oh, we can just love on him and be beautiful to him, the horse that loves on the other horses in the wild is normally second to the other horse. I want a relationship like all you do. A lot of people think they want a 50-50 relationship, but 50-50 is only half and half. I want 51 or 52% of the relationship, and my horse can have 48, but I make the decisions. And if they do the right things for me, my decisions are always in their favour. I'm going to ask all four horses now to see if they can canter in this tiny little ring, because that to me is probably the biggest thing I can ask for in here. And there's the reward. When I work with these horses constantly, and I'm asking a lot of them, People say, I want my horse to canter a, a, a circle for me, but he always wants to push in or he wants to drop his shoulder or to push out. So I'll say, well, if he wants to push in, I will push him out more than he needs to go. If he wants to draw out, I will ride him in more than I need him. And they say, well, what is his reward? And I say his reward is the circle that I want. That becomes a reward for him. If he is looking for a reward out of that, I'm never going to have him solid. My horses think, stop yawning, pride. You've hardly done anything. I'm going to bring hope and bring all three horses sideways here. We're going to ask them to stand this way or we'll back them up a little. Sequel here on my right, he's a little bit different, ladies and gentlemen. He's a full brother to pride. But have a look at the way he does everything. Someone watched me ride him the other day and they used to me watching pride, watching me ride, sorry, hope here on my right or spin abbey who are just brilliant. And they watch me ride sequel and they go, oh, he, your horses are getting a little bit grumpy because he throws his head when he stops and does some things, bridles and saddlers. I said, they're not getting a little grumpy. Sequel's just being himself. <laughs> That's who he is. So in an act, I don't ask anything more of him than he's brilliant at. But at home in training, I make sure that I put a lot on him. And he actually has been ridden by Templeton Thompson, the wonderful singer we have here. And she's loved him and said he's brilliant. Well, he's the number four as far as a ridden horse goes here. But my number four... Is you know, probably could be a number one to someone else, which is really nice. So I can it sideways there. Now, what we've done here, ladies and gentlemen, is I've put these horses in very much because I am a student of the horse and I'm a student of anyone who does good things with horses. In saying that, I, don't, I haven't been trained under anyone. Well, actually, I have. 
My four best trainers, and you've probably not read about them, their books aren't out in the store yet. Nancy, Navajo, Nugget, and Prue. All of them had four legs. Every horse that I worked with that gave me a little bit of trouble taught me how to be a better horseman. I didn't learn any of this from watching books and, read and watching DVDs, though I'd love you to watch mine. <laughs> but I've seen in the dressage stuff that people will put down cones. Now, as far as I know, ladies and gentlemen, these are the three most expensive training cones in the world. I'm going to canter between cone A. You notice that they can move around. I actually had it, um, you can program it in, but just to make it move around when you don't ask. You didn't see it, it was a small programming issue. So that's cone A over there. Cone A sometimes gets stuck and you've got to drag it about. We're going to there, do a flying change. That, um, the yawning thing just tells me that I could have had a little bit more lift. That's just telling me I didn't have quite enough lift in my canner, so we can create a little more lift. There we go. That's good. You won't be on anymore. So these horses here, being cones, as I said they are, they cost me $40,000 to come across here, but they're really good because you can move them about and do things with them. Now, the Australian stock horse, as I said before, has extreme ability, and he's known as the breed for every need. The reason for that is he'll do his hack moves, he'll work like a dressage horse, but he's mainly known for his extreme agility in the bush and for working on a cow. Now, every now and then this cone moves and that's just making it more difficult, which is good, you know, you can program her up. And the great thing about the stock horse is he's known to be able to turn on like that and then switch off completely. So, what we might do now is get both of these horses here to come together. I'm going to put them in a position you may not be used to seeing horses go in. I'll back him up a step and leave him standing there. We'll come and grab Sequel and bring him over here. The cue in front of his shoulders is to bring his shoulders. If I have to cue him in the neck, I will. But I want to be as palatable to you as I can, as well as accomplishing stuff with him. But everything you see me doing here is how I discipline him at home. Hope I don't remember asking you to walk off like that. <laughs> so we might come and stand here and see if we can bring him back, Hope. Hope has been stood on by Sequel a couple of times like this. Sequel couldn't care less. Hope gets a little offended. So, we want to back you a little. He says, you don't own my bum, and I say, well, I do. And the whole lot of you. Good boy. In saying that, if he didn't want to go there, I'd just keep working on it. Sequel, be a little bit careful when you do this. I told you he gets stood on, didn't I? So, what we'll do, Sequel, then, hmm, right. Just all talk amongst yourselves for a little bit. <laughs> we'll um, get this. And what makes me a horseman is that even though there's someone else supposed to come in half an hour, I'll go outside and fix it if I need to, but I won't stop until I have what I need. Now, I'm going to bring hope here. And it's about expectations. I expect them to be able to do this. Hope's so great that I can help him because it, he has to get stood on every now and then. So I can leave them standing there. 